What's up, guys? Today, we're going to break down Baker Mayfield as he blows out the Denver Broncos. First of all, I'm sorry I didn't make a video on Baker last week, but it was the holidays and I was caught up with family. No microphones at the dinner table. Anyway, this week, Baker did something that I've never seen before. I've scouted literally thousands of plays, right? I've graded about 7,500 plays this year. I graded about 8,000 plays last year, and I graded, I have no idea how many plays the year before, but probably like three to 4,000. I've never seen a game in which the quarterback didn't miss any passes until now let me know in the comments if I messed this up but I just rewatched I graded this game and I rewatched it here and graded every snap here uh I didn't see any inaccurate passes not one he had three throwaways he had a couple balls that were not perfectly placed but they were still very very catchable Baker Mayfield played a perfect game as a passer against the best passing defense in the NFL no less the Denver Broncos who are known for their crazy sim pressure and they're really good defensive backs. Now he had a fumble and we'll show you that. So it was not a perfect game. Not every play was positive, but uh, he only had one negative play. Even in a game that got out of hand, that's really impressive to me. So enough talking about it. Let's see it to the film. Rams are going to come out running a lot. Cam Akers played really well in this game, but that's not really helpful for what we're doing here. Baker's first throw is routine, on target, on schedule, read the play correctly, gets six yards, first down. Fine. Nothing Nothing to report back about. Remember these routine throws? They're like not getting a speeding ticket. I'm not going to pat you on the back for not getting a speeding ticket, but I'm sure going to accost you if you get one. So don't miss those easy throws and we won't have problems. Here, this one's iffy. A lot of arm talent, a lot of velocity, quick release on the move. Ball is catchable, but he probably took a yard or two away from Tyler Higby after the catch by putting the ball with such poor location. It's routine, but like a lot of those throws from Deshaun Watson's game against the Saints, it's barely routine. All right, so here, Baker's backed up like crazy, second and 15 to do some penalties, and he just lets this snap go through his hands. There's no reason that he should have fumbled that snap. There was some motion, but as you'll see on this replay, it didn't really distract Baker whatsoever. He just misses the ball, and therefore the fumble is on him. That's a bad fumble, and it's a negative sack. All that lost yardage, 13 yards on second down, that's all because of him. So on this drive, not so good. Three routine passes, and then that sack fumble, which is his fault exclusively. Will he turn it around? Spoiler alert. Yeah, he's, he's going to turn it around pretty well. <laughs> a common theme of this game is uh, Russell Wilson throws a pick, and that's a really good catch, but it's a pickable. We're not grading Russell Wilson, but boy. So, Rams start with great field position, much like the Bengals did last week against the Buccaneers. And much like the Bengals, the Rams are going to cash in. Here, Baker on a rollout. Great throw. Look at this. So, line of scrimmage is, is going to be the 31-yard line, not the 29. There's a little play action. You got deep developing routes. And oh. one thing I love about Sean McVay is that everything just makes sense. You're rolling the quarterback to the right. And look, you've got one, two, three, four receivers on the right. So, the quarterback is running towards the same sideline as all of his receivers. He finds the open man. This is a pretty solid window to throw into. 20, 25 yards downfield. Labels it onto him. Perfect ball placement. Great throw. First and goal. Baker with a pretty routine little swing out pass. Not that impressive, but it gets the touchdown. This is one of those funny little plays where... I'm not impressed by touchdown passes. I don't think they matter but a lot of people that look at box scores do. Baker gets a touchdown pass on a play that's not impressive. The play before, really impressive, no touchdown pass. So that just goes to show uh, why we don't use stats to evaluate quarterback play. On to drive three. You're not going to believe it. If you watch this game, so you believe it. Another Russ pick, and again, just like that second half with the Bengals facing the Buccaneers last week in Week 15, the Rams are going to get amazing starting field position already in the red zone when they get the ball. Here, Baker's going to do one of his favorite plays from Cleveland, a little play action boot left while rolling left, throws the flat to his tight end. This is a Kevin Stefanski special, I call it. And it takes some arm talent, I guess, but it's a routine throw. I mean, it was nothing, nothing special to speak of, and Cam Akers punches it in. So 
Drive 3 consists of two plays, one of which is a routine pass from Baker, and one of which is a touchdown. So the Rams are going to run the ball on their first put play of the new possession. The second quarter is going to begin with a solid throw from Baker. Now, this is really threading that needle between solid and pedestrian. I'm going to go with routine because I have a habit of uh, being accused of being biased towards Baker. So let's let's be a little biased against him. It's good timing. It's right on the dot. It's exactly where you want the ball placed. See how Tutu Atwell makes that catch with his hands out in front of his face despite being hit. But we'll call it routine. Just know it's on the high end of routine. Here on third and two, Baker does a really good job of getting through all his progressions. Now this is something you don't often see from quarterbacks that are not considered to be very good. Note how Baker's eyes are looking to the right when he begins this play, right? This is something that I knock Deshaun Watson for all the time in the videos I make on him. Baker's looking at his first wide receiver, this tight end right here, and Higby's open. He could throw it there. He then moves across the formation or across the play to his middle two progressions. They're obviously very covered. It's zone defense. The reason he didn't throw to Higby is because he sees this tight end coming up and he wants a little bit more. Finally, he realizes it's zone. That means there's nobody on the running back, and he checks it down. Now, is this an impressive play? Hell no! That's a routine-ass throw. But, note for future reference that Baker's processing looks legitimately decent, and considering the fact that he's been in this offense for three weeks, that's really impressive. So that's like a little, that's the underpinning, that's the context that you add back later uh, after grading. Now here, Baker, under pressure, swings it out, so he gets a plus move because he evades the pressure, he gets the ball out in time, but it's again a routine throw. And in post-game interviews, that's something that McVeigh and Mayfield were talking about a lot. They were trying to make sure that Baker felt comfortable with the checkdowns and the shorter throws because in the Packers game, they got stuck trying to make deep passes in some situations where they just weren't there. More play action, little screen back to the running back. I don't love that play design, and it's certainly routine, but the Rams do stay technically on schedule. Here, Baker does a good job. Again, look, he starts looking right. This is good processing. He's looking to Atwell. He sees I can get more. He looks to his slant. He doesn't like it because of the linebacker in zone. So he plays this little uh, later developing natural pick play over here. He sees Higby. He throws him on the curl. That's a solid play. That's a, I'm going to give that a solid throw. It was relatively tight window. Not tight, but there was a window he had to hit it in. It was far enough downfield, about eight yards, and it was really good pr processing. Here on second and goal, Baker drops back, true drop back, plenty of time, and he just throws it away. Now, I would have liked to see him try to hit Higby right here. There were dudes open, and I can show you the all-22 in a moment. But for now, that's just going to be a negative throwaway, slightly negative, not a big deal. As you can see, the ball hits the goalpost. It's not being aimed. <laughs> and here, Baker with a really good throw. Now, you could say this is great, or you could say it's solid. Watch right here, the right side of this offensive or defensive line. That's Alex Singleton, former Calgary Stampeders star, I believe. Baker knows he's going to get lit up. Like He can see that this dude's coming to kill him. And he says, I don't give a shit, I'm here to play quarterback, I'm taking the hit, I'm throwing a dime, touchdown. Now that's a touchdown pass that deserves the uh, hype that touchdown passes get. I'll call that great with a plus move, I'm really impressed by that. Alright, that's going to be the drive. Uh, you got to see this view. <laughs> First of all, people that like to talk about Baker being too short to see over the line, this is actually a really useful... I mean, it doesn't refute that. It doesn't necessarily confirm it either. It's a really useful view. Here's Baker, six foot, just barely, throwing over the line from a muddy pocket, getting hit, and putting the ball perfectly on Tyler Higbee's hands. Really good throw! Let's go to the All-22, and I'll show you that play from a couple snaps ago where Baker threw it away, and I think that maybe he shouldn't have. So here's that play where Baker throws the ball away, and I think maybe he shouldn't. So, 
I'm going to draw out all the routes for you right here. As you can see, he's got options. Personally, at this point, I'm looking at the check down to Cam Akers. He's a couple yards behind the line of scrimmage, but he's got one man to beat for a touchdown and about 10, 12 yards of separation to make something happen. As the play develops, you see that Baker looked to this little, uh, it's not really a pick route, it's kind of a flood, right? So you've got this curl from Higby, and then you're trying to run this receiver right behind him. I'm sorry I don't know the names of all the receivers. These are mostly backups, and frankly, I don't recognize them by number just yet. Anyway, this guy is bracketed, so even though you've got a little bit of a flood concept and it is zone defense, it's just not going to work. Again, I would have taken the check down to Cam Akers a little earlier. That would have been the perfect play. But, granted that you're looking for the end zone on first or second down, I understand why he threw it away. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. Let's watch it one more time. Little motion, nobody moves so you know it's zone. The routes I drew up earlier, nobody's really open. Yeah, just get that thing out of there. Not so bad. The Rams finally force a punt. About time their defense did something. Yuck, yuck, yuck. No, I'm kidding. It's just Russell Wilson finally didn't throw a pick. Anyway, this game is getting really close to being in garbage time already. Right here on second and five, Baker, play action, <laughs> already under siege. They've reset the line of scrimmage without any offensive linemen. There's four dudes all bearing down on him. Yeah, just get that ball the fuck out of there. Positive throwaway, plus movement, happens, cool. Third and five, need to do something here, and Baker throws a dart. Look at this. So first of all, everybody's pretty well covered. You could have thrown this with some anticipation of Van Jefferson, and he could have probably broken for a first down. C27 coming in late. Yeah, Baker missed that read, but he found something a little better. It's about 12 yards downfield. Clearly a solid throw. Perfect ball placement. Ton of velocity. That's what you love to see. That's what makes Baker a good quarterback. It's why he was drafted first overall. Velocity and accuracy down the field. Here, routine play. Just a little tunnel screen. Nothing to it. But they don't all have to be zingers. Here, Baker does a really good job. Look at this pocket navigation, and first of all, kudos to his offensive line, which is patchwork, but it does a good job of holding up here. Baker's got a ton of time. Baker's got an open dude here in Powell, I think. He's got an open running back here in the flat. He wanted to throw it out here to the curl, the first read. For some reason, he pulls it back down, but after he resets, he navigates the pocket, two plus moves, and he checks it down to Powell, like he should have in the first place, but still, routine throw, good pocket manipulation solid here dude not a lot of guys have the arm talent to pull this off this is when people say baker's got a really strong arm this is what they're talking about it's not the 73 yard bomb against baltimore a few years ago it's stuff like that it's a five yard pass but it's gunned into double coverage and it was crucial again we're gonna call it routine but i think it's really solid it's just as if not a lot of quarterbacks can make that throw it's short so it looks easy but the t window is so tight he had so little time, and he was fading away to manipulating the pocket. Here, in a little screen, shit happens. Tyler Higby had a hell of a game. I don't know what woke him up, but he played really, really well against a Denver team that has been pretty good against tight ends this year. They've had, I mean, they have good linebacker play. Uh, remember the Kevin Stefanski special? Play action rollout left, uh, flat to the... Well, flat or drag to the tight end. That's one of Baker's favorites. Gets him a little plus move, because anytime you throw while rolling away from your throwing arm, I give you a plus move and a routine throw, because it wasn't that hard. Here Cam Akers busts it in, and on a drive where Baker Mayfield was legitimately very good, no touchdown pass. They scored a touchdown, but it didn't come off Baker's arm. So naturally, he sucks, and his QBR should suffer. Or stats don't tell the story. Let's keep it moving. Time for the second half, and we are really on the last threads of gradable film here. It's 31-6. to It's a complete blowout. Broncos are about to start fighting on the sideline. It's over. And, and frankly, the Rams shouldn't be throwing the ball anymore for the rest of the game. 
As you can see, Sean McVay is no idiot. He gets that memo as well. However, on second and ten from midfield, the Rams, I almost called them the Browns just out of muscle memory. Rams come out and throw a quick hitter. Good job by Baker to stay in time and in rhythm, be accurate, be precise, have good velocity, but it's a routine throw. Wish we could make a mountain out of a molehill, but that would be silly. Here, Baker does a smart thing. If this was a close game, I am actually very confident that he would turn this into a first down by cutting up the field and putting the body on the line, maybe lowering the boomstick to the extent that he can. Uh, instead, he sees number 91 and says, that's a large man. He sees Alex Singleton and said, I remember when he hit me earlier and it didn't feel good. And he just says, fuck it. <laughs> I'm going to get out of bounds. It's a neutral run. It's a plus move to break out of the pocket. And again, I'm pretty confident that if this game wasn't such a fucking blowout, he could have done something. But we can't grade him based on what he would have done. Instead, again, look at him process. Going across the field. He's on his third or fourth read here. Getting to the running back, checking it down. Accurate, accurate throw. Great tackle by Josie Jewell. Malcolm Brown showing why he was out of the NFL for a couple years. He just doesn't have the juice. Uh... I spoke too soon. Malcolm Brown with the juice. Really good fourth down conversion run. Put that head down, turn those legs, big boy. Here, a little play action, and this is basically the Kevin Stefanski special, traditional style. Rolling to the right with the quarterback's arm. It's a plus movement for throwing on the run. It's another plus movement for throwing while evading a charging linebacker. It's a routine throw. Higby dove here, and he probably didn't have to. Baker also could have laid the ball out a little bit closer to the sideline to keep him upright and running. But it's an accurate throw. It should have been caught, just like that one was. This one is kind of fun. This is a throw that's being employed a lot in the NFL right now. And back in the day, a coach might have said, oh, you put it behind your receiver. But what they're doing is they're putting the ball on the upfield hip, basically so that the receiver has to turn around and catch it, carrying their momentum up the field as they make the catch. It's a really good way of increasing yards after the catch. So that's actually a perfectly thrown ball. But it's really easy, so it's still routine. Again, this is just a screen, play action, screen back to the wide receiver. Denver sniffed it out immediately. They lose yards. It doesn't work. That's not the quarterback's fault whatsoever. So the Rams will kick a field goal because, well, look at the score. 34-6, does it really even matter? We've got one, maybe two more drives left of Baker Mayfield in this game, and this game is totally out of hand. We shouldn't see much throwing, but Sean McVay likes to give us a little bit of fun. He'll mix in a little play action here. Baker going deep. It's a good throw. Line of scrimmage is the 48. Ball is caught at about the... 37, let's call it, 38. So 38 plus 48 is like a 90 or 86. It's a 15 yard play. It's a good pass. It wasn't that well covered, but it was quick. It was on time. It was far enough downfield. And we're on to the fourth quarter. They're going to finish this drive out. And then I think Baker's going to take a seat. Second seven, Baker, routine throw in rhythm within the offense. Here, he's reading, he's reading, he's late, he doesn't want to be aggressive, he's moving around, fuck it. So here's what should have happened. He got this bunch, or uh, trips formation left, rather. It is bunch as well. You got Van Jefferson breaking out. You've got, I think that's Higby, but it's a, I think it's a white guy, uh, carrying the top off of these defenders, right? Because it's zone, and these defenders are all going to get bunched up because of bunch. So you got Jefferson going out, Higby clearing out by going deep, and then you're going to have Powell sit down and curl, or maybe 2-2 two, two out well. It's a short, fast guy. So the idea is that either these defenders are going to shade inside, and then you throw to Jefferson. They're going to shade outside, and you throw the curl or they're going to bite, and then you throw it over the top to Higby. Uh, Higby's pretty much open. Jefferson's very open. Baker says, there's too many dudes over there, and we're winning. Fuck it, we'll take the field goal. So he rolls around a little bit, seeing what can what he can do. 
takes a fucking shot. You'll know. Look, look at that. <laughs> Randy Gregory just decided that he chose violence today and he didn't get a chance to enact enough of it. So, Baker Mayfield gets a plus movement for not putting the ball in harm's way while throwing it away. He gets a plus movement for taking that fucking late hit. And he gets a throw away. Because he threw the ball away. It looked a lot worse from the, out, from the, uh, the original camera angle. That wasn't so bad after all. Whoops. But Cam Akers says, fine, I'll take another touchdown. And boom. Knocks out a cameraman. I think that's going to be it for Baker's day. Even if it's not, <laughs> this game is completely out of hand and becoming a shit show quickly. So, let's get to the charts. No need to see a pick six and some Bryce Perkins kneels. So, as you can see on the chart, and as you may have noticed while we were actually watching the film, Baker Mayfield didn't miss any passes. I've never seen this before. Like, it wasn't the greatest degree of difficulty, right? He only had seven positive throws, but um, that's still 23%. And remember that the league average amongst starting quarterbacks is 24%. So he's just a little below average on positive plays. But the league average of negative plays is 29%. And he came in at three. In fact, his only negative play was the snap that he fumbled. That's absurd. He fumbled a snap and gave up a big sack and that killed drive. That is really bad. That is a really bad play. It's just as bad as an interception in my eyes. But even th still, that was his only negative play of the game. He had 100% accuracy. He had a slugging score of 9, which is very good when you only have 25 gradable dropbacks, because uh, throwaways don't count, right? Like, we can't get anything from his three throwaways. Like, they were inaccurate, sure, but they were throwaway. <laughs> and one of them didn't even count because he got lit up by uh, Randy Gregory afterwards, and roughing the passer obviated the play. So... Two great throws, five solid throws. One of those great throws was a touchdown to Tyler Higby. Uh, five solid throws, 17 routine throws, no bad throws, no pickable balls. The one bad sack off of the fumble, uh, one sack that just wasn't his fault. Three throwaways, one of which didn't count because of the roughing the passer. No positive runs, a neutral run, remember where he made a business decision because this game was already out of hand. 15 positive movements in the pocket, I showed you all of them. And, of course, the fumble. 72% cheap plays. Now, granted, when you're winning by... 20, 25 points at halftime, you're not going to get that many opportunities to slang it down the field and really show off your arm. So typically, when you have that many cheap plays, it, it's tough to get a really good grade. But the problem is that Baker Mayfield didn't, he was perfect. Like People always ask me, what happens if a guy only throws routine throws, only makes pedestrian throws, but he, is act, he completes all of them, all of them. I say, well, that'd be like a C plus performance. Well, what if a guy completes all of his routine throws and then he also makes seven positive throws while evading pressure pretty fucking often i would say that's a fucking perfect game he fumbled the snap and that's not excusable but if you take that away he doesn't have a negative play <laughs> it's the only time that he had a negative play god forbid he just catches that ball and throws it away he's rocking a zero percent negative play rate and 12 slugging points on 25 plays which is an absurd ratio so what have we seen from baker mayfield with the rams we, he's had three games and and one of them was very cold. His game in Green Bay was just about as cold as it was in Cleveland versus New Orleans, just about as cold as it was in, uh, well, I mean, the, the, basically, it's the coldest game that Lambeau Field's seen in about 10, 15 years. There were a lot of cold games this week, and I don't believe that you just throw away a game because it was cold outside. Like, no, you still got to play in the cold, especially if you play for a cold weather team. Now, if you play for the LA Rams, you don't have to play in the cold as often, but you still have to play in the cold, especially if you make it to the playoffs. Regardless, he played below average against the Packers. He got a C minus. I didn't make a video because it was the holidays, but yeah, he had a pickable ball. He had a fumble. He took three sacks he shouldn't have and he was having a hard time checking it down in this game uh, I think it's safe to say he fixed his check down issues. He was pretty goddamn good checking the ball down, seeing as he didn't miss. Through three games with the Rams, his accuracy percentage is 81.6. Now, remember, accuracy percentage is just how accurate was he. It takes away the drops, right? You don't count drops. You don't count a ball that boings off of a receiver's face. That's accurate, right? We're looking to see if the ball was where it should have been. The average starting quarterback in the NFL this year is accurate on 71.5% of their passes. So Baker has been roughly 10 percent more accurate than the average starting quarterback this year. 
extrapolated, and it's three games. So let's hold our breath. You know, let's let's be careful here. But over those three games, Baker Mayfield's been more accurate than any other quarterback in the NFL this year. It's absurd. I'm just going to take a little dig at Browns fans because they've been very not nice to me on my Deshaun Watson videos, but Deshaun Watson through four games has been accurate on 63.6% of his passes. And to the extent you can say Deshaun's rusty because of his 11 game suspension in the year that he decided to take off because he felt like it, Baker Mayfield's been in this offense for three weeks and he's played three games. So 20% accuracy difference, not really excusable. Even Justin Herbert, who's probably the most accurate passer in the NFL, is only accurate on 76% of his passes. So Baker has been absolutely on fire since getting to LA. On the year, his accuracy is still 77, which is really, really good. And again, it's buoyed by the fact that he was accurate on every throw of week 16. That helps. 25 accurate passes helps. Either way, he's playing really, really well in LA. It was harder to see that he was playing well when he was in Carolina because of the way that Carolina is. <laughs> they just are a wreck and their win against Detroit notwithstanding, they are a very messy team, especially before uh, Wilkes took over in Matt Rule's stead. Matt Rule had that team running like a pirate ship without a captain. A lot of fucking around. Anyway, tell me what you think. I mean, it's not, there's not that much to say other than, yeah, he was literally perfect and they blew out the Broncos and half the game was not worth watching. But Baker Mayfield's looked really good in LA. Is it sustainable? Do you disagree with any of my grades? Am I too high on him in some spots? Should I be more measured? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. But uh, right now it's looking like Hollywood Mayfield is an absolute star.